Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Nutrition 101. So if you guys are new here, welcome. My name is Becca. I am a registered dietitian and today's video is actually episode two of my Nutrition 101 series. So in the first episode, I talked all about macronutrients, so carbohydrates, protein, and fat. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about digestion. So I could literally talk about digestion all day long, which probably sounds kind of weird. Next to pregnancy and breastfeeding, I think digestion is one of the most fascinating aspects of nutrition. I mean, down to a cellular level, it is just insanely intricate and just very, very fascinating. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a nice little overview of digestion, kind of the basics version of it, because everyone eats food and everyone digests food so everyone should have a basic understanding of how this works so let's get started so digestion is pretty much everything that goes on to food after we ingest it so obviously the first step would be in your mouth you will have a meal you'll consume some kind of food or a meal snack whatever and your uh, digestion of that meal will actually start in your mouth mechanically through chewing so you're going to be chewing your food and breaking it down that way physically breaking it down there is a little bit of chemical digestion that happens in your mouth and it's just for carbohydrates there is an enzyme that is lives in your mouth it's called amylase it's also in other areas of your digestive tract as well but that will actually start to break down some carbohydrates but just a little bit but pretty much it's just chewing in your mouth mechanical digestion and while you are chewing your mouth will form what's called a bolus it's basically just like a little ball of food cute I know and then you go ahead and you swallow that so that bolus will then travel down your esophagus and will enter into your stomach now before I go any further, pretty much from here on out as far as digestion, everything is ruled by hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers or chemical signals and they basically run our body. They tell our body all the different things that it needs to do. Just to name a few, there is gastrin, cholecystokinin, secretin, motilin, somatostatin, amylin. There are so many different hormones that all play roles with digestion. So whether it's telling your body, hey, secrete more you know, stomach acid or secrete pancreatic juices or tell the stomach to slow down and the intestines to speed up, it's just a whole crazy like cascade of hormones. I just want to make sure that I mention that because it is very important but also just very interesting and all those hormones I just listed aren't even half of the ones that have to do with digestion and that's just one area of our body. Moving on, so the bolus has now traveled down our esophagus and has entered into our stomach. So believe it or not, the stomach is actually split up into four different sections and within those different sections there are so many different cell types and they all have their own very specific functions. It's again very fascinating very intricate so what happens in the stomach is basically a lot of hydrochloric acid gets secreted into our stomach which helps to break down the food so this is chemical digestion so not only do we have this really acidic environment our stomach is also going to be kind of um, contracting so it's going to help to mix up all of the food which just again helps to break everything down as much as possible and it's not going to get completely liquefied in your stomach but a lot of that food is going to be broken down to at least very small bits so like I said it is mainly chemical digestion that's happening here and it's pretty much just of carbs and protein at this point fat doesn't get broken down until we enter into the intestines so all of this acidic liquid is kind of getting mixed up and it now becomes what we call chyme and then chyme is what then moves on into our intestines one thing I think is super interesting is we only pass about two teaspoons of that chyme from our stomach to our intestine every minute so it's actually like a pretty slow process it's pretty drawn out so once that acidic chyme hits the intestinal wall it actually signals some hormones to do a couple things so one is it's going to stimulate the pancreas to release what's called pancreatic juices which is much more basic and is going to neutralize the acid because it has a lot of bicarbonate in it there's also some enzymes and some electrolytes as well and the other thing um, that acidic medium entering the intestine will signal is our gallbladder to contract and to start to squirt some bile into our intestines bile is actually created in the liver um, it's made from cholesterol and a couple other things but it is stored in the gallbladder the gallbladder basically kind of acts as like a reservoir for it so once you have all of those secretions going it creates the perfect environment for 
enzymes to start working on breaking down carbohydrates as well as proteins and then also for bile to start working on breaking down those fats. So carbs and proteins are going to pretty much be broken down into their simplest forms and then all of the fat is going to be formed into what's called chylomicrons and once we get to that stage things are allowed to then go on to be absorbed. So when I say absorption, I mean either vitamins or minerals or those broken down macronutrients are going to pass through the intestinal wall and therefore they can go into our bloodstream and the rest to the rest of our body. So the really, really interesting thing about that, you know, absorption through the intestinal wall, the intestinal wall is so interesting and fascinating and I'll tell you why. So there are kind of, um, three ways that our intestinal wall or you know the lining of our intestines increases its surface area. So first you have these kind of like rings all throughout your intestines that basically just kind of bulge into you know the inner tube or the, the inside of your intestines. So that just kind of creates a, ri a ridge or a ring. It increases surface area. And then for the actual lining of our intestines, it's not a smooth surface. We actually have what's called villi and they're basically like these finger-like projections that stick out and basically again it's just to help create surface area so instead of just one smooth surface you now have all of this surface area in here which just increases our um, ability to absorb nutrients because we have more surface area but then there's even more on top of that so you have all of these finger-like projections or villi but then all on the outs you know the outside edges of all of these villi we have what's called microvilli and they're basically kind of like little hairs so again it's just another layer of just increasing that surface area so when you actually add all of that surface area up between those rings I told you about and the villi and the microvilli it's actually you the way you can picture it the amount of surface area that's created just in your little gut and that small just in the small intestine is about three feet wide okay so kind of like a sidewalk and get this three football fields long. Just let that sink in. Three football fields long is all squished into your one little small intestine. Like that is just insane. And it's just because all of those little extra projections that just increase surface area and therefore increase absorption. So once those micro or macronutrients are absorbed through that crazy intestinal wall, they go into what's called an enterocyte, which is basically just a cell in our intestines, our small intestines. And from there, we will send almost everything into the portal vein, which is, you know, into our bloodstream, which will then go on to the liver. The only thing that doesn't go into the portal vein to our liver is fat. All the fat actually goes into our lymph system first, travels all the way through our lymph system, and then eventually will be incorporated into our bloodstream. This is just to help uh, slow the... Um, onslaught of fat getting into our blood because if it just went straight into our blood our blood would get very very thick and gloppy and obviously that's not a good thing. So at this point pretty much all of the nutrients have been absorbed from you know the intestinal matter and whatever's left over will just continue on down and enter into our large intestine or colon. So the colon is a little bit wider but it's only about five feet long so it's nowhere near you know the crazy amount of surface area that we have in our small intestine and the small intestine is definitely where the action is in comparison not much goes on in the large intestine there are some secretions but mainly it's just an absorption of water and sodium back into the body back into the bloodstream and basically just dehydrates whatever matter is going through our large intestine. So there is also going to be a little bit of fermentation happening in the colon. There is a lot of bacteria, um, both good and some bad bacteria in our large intestine as well as the small intestine, but it is super concentrated in the large intestine. So those bacteria are going to be feeding off of whatever is left over, um, you know, whatever matter is coming through our colon. And they can be synthesizing biotin from that. They can synth synthesize vitamin K as well. And they can also make some short chain fatty acids from what's left over, which is important because those actually help um, to like seal our gut and just maintain integrity of our intestinal lining. And of course, whatever matter is left over after any stray carbs or protein have been fermented, that matter will just continue through the colon. It will take anywhere, depending on the person, could take up 12 to up to 70 hours for um, that matter to move completely through, but then whatever is left over, we just excrete. Like I said, there is a lot of bacteria concentrated here, and it is so important for our overall health, as well as gut health, for us to have really good levels of 
health promoting, you know, good bacteria versus pathogenic bacteria. Gut health has definitely been a, a buzzword recently. Everyone is talking about gut health and probiotics and prebiotics and fermented foods. And honestly, it's, it's for a good reason because we continue to just do more research and find more links um, between a less than optimal microflora in the gut with all of these other, you know, uh, ailments or, or sicknesses, diseases, whatever. And it's just like very interesting. There is still a lot to learn when it comes to these links and also just a lot of research still needs to be done on gut health in general, but you definitely can't go wrong with having a healthy gut. And along with talking about healthy gut, I feel like I have to mention the fact that there is a huge presence of you know, our immune system, immune cells in our small intestine. So the main reason we have this huge host of immunity or immune cells in our small intestine is because we are taking in, you know, food from the outside world all day long that could potentially be contaminated. So we have all these immune cells right there, like on the front lines basically, so they can bind to antigens and make sure that they, you know, can kill them or whatever, kill them off so they don't make us sick. These immune cells can also help decrease the growth of the pathogenic or the bad bacteria, which we certainly don't want an overgrowth of, and also can just help to keep um, bacteria basically from getting into our bloodstream and transporting to other areas of our body. So there you have it. That is just a really basic overview of the digestive system. If you guys are enjoying this series, I would absolutely love for you to thumbs up this video because it really helps me out and also it just lets me know that you guys are liking these videos and if you are liking my videos I would love for you to subscribe to my channel and just join my little community here on YouTube and of course you can follow me on Instagram and Snapchat as well so we can hang out on there but that is all I have for this video guys thank you so much for hanging out with me today hope you had fun and I will see you in the next video Bye.